after playing through Side Order enough times, you may be able to realize what maps you're about to see just from the names alone. And maybe, just maybe, you want a couple more levels? What if we took the PvP levels that we know and love, like Mako Mart, like Humpback Pump Track, and turned them into maps in Side Order? It, it, it'd be fun. So come with me, take your best guess, and see if your opinion's the same as mine. I feel like Wahoo World could really use any mode successfully from side order, but I really want to see it as a zones map. And I'm not talking about like going to the splat zone up here and being like, oh yay, splat zones, Wahoo World Pulp. No, 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 no. Down here. Yes. Like keep the rest of the map's infrastructure so you have plenty of ways to move around the zone. One half of the zone, this ring. Other half of the zone, this side of the ring. Yes. <laughs> Hear me out. Turbine Tower on Scorch Gorge, but, but not on this map. I want Turbine Tower on the Turf War map. You could take the tower across the grades, like have the path maybe alongside it or even on it, that we can bring it across. Biggest problem, you fall down on accident, oops. <laughs> Consider having the tower start about here. You gotta bring it all the way up this ramp. You gotta bring it up the side of the tower here and then across the grate. Yeah. Listen, I don't even want to think about chasing the panicking fish around the base of the, like, <laughs> the Scorch Gorge. <laughs> no, 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 no. At first I thought about a turbine tower level for like Eeltail Alley. Like, you know, maybe take it across the bridge here in the middle, but I realized that I have a heart, so I'm not gonna make you do that. Instead, lovingly imagine this map as an infinity ball level. It starts over here and you gotta take it all the way to the other side. You know, where the other Rainmaker podium is. As you're pushing the ball along, droves of enemies are hopping down from the top over here, from the sides over there. It's not fun. <laughs> Come on, rigorous eight ball level. Do it, do it, do it. Hagglefish Market is a turbine tower level. The turbine starts here. It starts here. It's going to be here. You gotta get up here. You gotta push the turbine back to this side of the base. And then you gotta bring it through the middle. Imagine a horde of fish trying to stop you from pushing the turbine through one of these like small crowded spots right here. <laughs> Afterward, loop it around the back and bring it to rest all the way over here. Evil. I do think that chucking a bounce pad right here would be a great idea. That way, you know, turbine's moving. You just hippity hop over this wall to keep pushing it. I like that, I think that's okay. Undertow Spillway is a portal level. I'm putting a portal here, here on the glass, almost on the glass, just to mix it up, just to mix it up. And then one back here. That way there's four portals and they're pretty evenly spaced out and you make use of most of the map. This map is begging, begging for bounce pads. You know that one map where like everything is a bounce pad? We're putting bounce pads across this entire hallway and this entire hallway here. It'd be, it'd be beautiful. <laughs> I want to go. Turning Mincemeat Metalworks into anything that isn't a turbine tower path feels like a waste of how wide this map is now. Don't worry, fella. You'll never have to see the horrors. We can start the turbine all the way in the back over here and then bring it across the grates. While you're pushing that tower along, there's those awful sniper enemies waiting for you. <laughs> An alternative could be that when you use the turbine tower, instead of it going across the grates, it could go under the grates here and then straight up the pole. <laughs> you could have one half where you go under and then one half where you go over, making use of even more of the map. We're gonna turn Hammerhead Bridge into the great chase dot floor. <laughs> this is the panicking fish map. Look at all the space that they have to run. You put like four of them here in different corners. You're gonna be going from side to side to side following them around. Come on, you shoot at it here. He's gonna go like this, zoop up the side, alley-oop. Just take a moment to imagine all the fish running away from you and getting all the way back here into the enemy spawn. You're so excited. You know that you've done it right, but this map has added like a bounce pad in the back over here and they just book it even further back. <laughs> or worse, you corner them here and they get up this and they run away. <laughs> it's evil. You don't have to do anything with this map. It just works. 
Oh, Museum de Alfonsino. Your glorious Splat Zone makes you a great Splat Zones map. But what if we did a little bit more to it? What if this was a double zones map? And I'm not talking about like cruel Sisyphianing it by like putting the zone like one here and putting the other zone all the way on the other side, like over there. Can we make a second zone and it's just the top bit? The second zone is just the spinner. <laughs> But how would this not be too easy? Well, because the sprinkler fish are gonna be focused on this top zone here, they're gonna be really high in the sky. Unless you have a lot of range, you're gonna have to come up here on this spinner to take care of them. And if you're not paying attention, the lower part of the zone is gonna get absolutely overwhelmed with everything else. Imagine you've been painting from here for a while, you drop down, you forget, there's a pile of battering lentos right here in your path. Ah! <laughs> Nothing drives me more off the wall, I think, in Splatoon 3 than Mahi Mahi Tower Control. It's just because I'm like prone to just be in the water. <laughs> Imagine the negative reception that a portal level would have with the Mahi TC layout. Like, like leave the little bridge in the middle, leave the water hazards, and put portals at maybe the checkpoints, more or less here. We'll put a big portal right where the tower is. We'll have the other one over here, far away. We'll have another one on this side over here. I kind of thought I wasn't gonna miss this jump. <laughs> and then we'll put one final big portal back here. Please imagine just for a moment, you're firing away at the tower. There are fish coming at you. You're backing up, you're backing up. In the water you go, idiot fool. <laughs> Inkblot is a fish chase map. Especially when you use the clam blitz layout, there's lots of different paths that you can see the fish taking. I mean, hey, listen, nothing would probably bring you more joy than taking one of the fish and trapping them in this, <laughs> in this little corner right here. Sorry to say, Splatfest post. You even get a couple of really good short vantage points to see where the panicking fish are from here. But um, I think the fish are getting attacked here. <laughs> Just imagine a wild goose chase one of the fish down here by the trees. <laughs> Awful, 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 awful. Get it away, get it away, get it away. We're leaving, we're leaving, we're going, bye. If you added a couple of ramps, Sturgeon Shipyard could be a really good ball level. With how tight this area is here, you could have a lot of opposition trying to bring a ball up to the middle of the map. Why not put one of the ball spaces, like right there, another one on this side over here, and you could have a third one all the way in the back over here up this ramp. There are dash pads over here. That's if the ball ends up in this horrid area down here underneath. You can actually get the ball out. What if this is one of the levels where it's mostly the springy guys that spawn? That way your ball can end up going into all the places you don't want it to. Let's take the ball up here and now you gotta go get it. Let's put the ball all the way over here and now you gotta go get it. Maybe this platform wouldn't spin because you wouldn't want the ball to accidentally fall through. <laughs> The problem I have with Mako Mart in my brain is that it really feels like it's hard to build a sense of progression when you're playing on Mako Mart. I feel like Mako Mart would work best as a portal level. And loading into the Rainmaker map, I thought to myself that I could just, you know, put the portals at every single one of the Rainmaker podiums. But that makes you kind of have to go back it doesn't feel like the way that a lot of side order levels are built. To get around this problem, I realized that I could just ignore the one Rainmaker pedestal that's over there on the right hand side and use just the four remaining level spots as places that you could put portals. Let's put a big one right in the center where usually the Rainmaker would be. It would take a while to break this one and while you're here, plenty of enemies would have time to start spawning on the other sides. That way by the time you get there, there's a lot of problems awaiting you. Well. That's shopping spree dot floor. I'm gonna be so real. I thought about Brinewater and I was like, well, it's just a zones map, <laughs> right? Right? You, you go to Brinewater zones and you can play Brinewater zones like normal and have all the fish come and get you. You could have the sprinkler fish come over from the sides. You could have, uh, like, I don't know, snipers, like right over here. But the more I thought about it, the more I didn't want to go with the basic easy idea, you know? So instead I thought, hey, we could turn it into another ball level. <laughs> but the more I thought about that, I realized, wait a minute, there's already a ball level inside order that acts almost like that. Ah! 
<laughs> Side order took all the versus the map I could use. So I decided to invert the ball idea. Now what you gotta do is you gotta bring the balls back up one to each side. <laughs> Imagine the plight. Imagine the pain. Side order. Kiss. I feel like any mode could really also work on Flounder Heights. Imagine chasing the fish and they fall <laughs> straight off the sides. With so much ground to cover and maybe the return of this side of the map being paintable this time. <laughs> you could put three portals very easily up top at the top bit of Flounder Heights. I think the third portal that's actually up here should be in this corner right here. Corner areas in side order are like the worst. Any excessive fish that fall down from fighting the portals up here could easily begin to fill the ground back here before you have to go and take care of one more portal all the way in the back corner, like close to where the enemy spawn would be. I think that Flounder Heights would make a really good portal level. Yeah. Instead of taking advantage of Umami Ruins' amazing splat zone setup, you know, it already has like double zones, I think it'd work really good as a turbine tower level. Put like a checkpoint like around here, right? You bring it around, you put another checkpoint right after the drop here, and then you gotta bring it deep into the enemy spawn. There's lots of places that fish could continue to show up from, like here, like there, and bada bing bada boom, turbine tower map, fixed it. Fixed your mommy ruins. Thanks. My job here. Done. However, Barnacle and Dime is not escaping the Splat Zone's allegations. With how it's set up, it really would make for a really good single zone level. I'm standing here, I'm approaching the zone, and what pops out of that spot over there? The sniper fish. <laughs> You gotta move across the whole zone, you've got a fair amount of cover already from this block, and you gotta go get rid of that guy or else he's gonna be a problem the whole time. Imagine the arpeggios just spawning in, one over here on this side, and then one on the far side over there. How annoying it would be. I promise, I promise, your map is safe for now, okay? <laughs> You know what isn't safe though? Oh boy, it's Humpback Pump Track. And this, this is the ball level of all time. Remember how I was talking about Eel Tail earlier being your rigorous ball level? I didn't even think about Humpback until like a little further into this, like into, into like planning this video out. And I was like, ha ha, imagine Humpback Pump Track as a ball level and the amount of vitriol. <laughs> I don't even have to show you. You can imagine it, right? It's already set up so well for the ball to come rolling through. You get the like the Rainmaker checkpoints out of the way and you can take the balls anywhere on this map. It's perfect. It is the ball level of all time. And I'm sure more people in the comments are gonna be mortified that I'm still thinking about ball on Humpback Pump Track, but I'm sorry, nothing can stop me. Nothing except this Rainmaker that's about to blow up. Hear me out for a minute on this one. Crab Leg Capital is your cruel Sisyphean eight-shaped floor zones type level. <laughs> you put one zone all the way over here by this set of grates, and you put another zone all the way on the other side by that set of grates. These blocks are even in perfect position to be the greatest places in the world, aka the worst places in the world, for the sprinkler fish to show up. You have one that comes out of here, and it just slowly filters its way over to where your teeny tiny little zone is over here. And if you forget to constantly deal with those, this level uh, this level might, might take a while. You've got your sniper fish, you've got your arpeggios, you've got your sprinklers, you've got two little teeny tiny zones. It's evil, it's perfect, it's good. I'm moving on now. Ship shape is genuinely one of the best portal levels in the game. You put one portal right here at the start, right through this thin hallway, so you gotta fight your way through it, right? Right? And then you just keep going. You put two more portals here. One up top on this side, one on top at this side. You got plenty of space to move around, so it wouldn't be an actual issue that there's two portals here dropping fish. 
You could go from the middle up to them. You can go from the sides up to them. If you have plenty of range, you might be able to sit back here and look pretty while firing at the portals. After blasting through both of those portals, you would move straight ahead. And the final portal would be all the way in the back right over here. So you'd have to fight through one more crowd of fish through this thin hallway to actually finish off the level, which I think is pretty fair. I think one of the saddest things about Ship Shape is how like well it almost gives itself to being a really good level for using the Pearl Drone, but in reality, it's just too flat to be able to traverse really far with it. <laughs> that would make it the perfect portal level, but it's still pretty, 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 pretty good. Manta Maria is your classic single ball level. You have one ball, and your goal is to take it from this side of Manta Maria all the way to the other side. And bada bing bada boom, you bring the ball all the way down here behind the giant Manta Maria pole. And now you've got to fight off all the guys that are probably rushing you as the ball is slowly but surely becoming one with this spot. The battering lentos maybe come from the left and the right. Terrifying. Beautiful. Manta Maria, ball. <laughs> With its goofy hallways and twists and turns, making Robo Ramen anything but a fish level would be a disservice to the map design. <laughs> I mean, just just look at the mini map and all the places you can go. Imagine chasing the fish just down here. It'd be great. I can't imagine any other one you'd want to do. I mean, like you could do splat zones on here and put the zone right here in the center and have things attack you from both sides. But I feel like I've done that enough on other maps in this. This is one of the best cornering fish spots in the game. <laughs> Leave a bomb here, just let the fish fall off himself, straight off of the map. See you later, loser. Besides, if I made Robo Ramen a zones map, I wouldn't feel very good about making Bluefin Depot a zones map too. Bluefin Depot just, has to be a zones map. Keep the gimmick that we already have added to the game for Bluefin Depot zones, you know, where the zone like moves depending on who is in control of it, and give it to us and the fish. <laughs> Imagine if the fish took the zone and the zone moved back to the other side. What, what else do I even have to say about this one? Marlin Airport has to be a turbine tower level. Imagine taking the turbine tower over to one of the fans that's on Marlin Airport. As you're firing at the turbine tower, the turbine tower's ink forces the fan on Marlin Airport to continually stay up. By the time the fan drops back down and you're able to move on, there's already been a bunch of fish that have all spawned down here. And to make it worse, now there's some that have spawned behind you too, so you just gotta, you just gotta go, man. You gotta go. When you bring the turbine into the enemy base, the turbine tower does not stop here. In fact, it's gonna go all the way back to the corner over there. Thankfully, it's pretty hard to fall off of the map going from right to left, but, uh, it doesn't mean that you can't fall if you're not paying attention. <laughs> so that's all the Splatoon 3 maps lovingly turned into side order maps with minimal changes. I'm sure that if you added more things to each map, you could also do much more with them. But really, this was a lot of fun to do, and I'd like to know if you agree with me on these, or if you think some of my ideas are terrible. <laughs> or, or good, yay! Whatever it may be, feel free to leave a comment telling me how I did and what you would change. Thanks for listening. Now, excuse me, I gotta, I gotta get back to side order. Bye-bye.